Swiss family businesses contribute 64% of the country's GDP and account for two-thirds of jobs in Switzerland. They are responsible for both family and business matters and have to maintain a balance between them. We at PwC give Swiss family businesses a voice. I'm Mercedes Schmitz and I'm working at PwC Switzerland in the area of family businesses. There's currently quite some noise in the market around the term family office. And thus I sat down with Dr. Alexander köbele schmidt family business expert at PricewaterhouseCoopers Germany and Switzerland, to learn more about family offices, the dynamics of such and why it's getting more and more popular. Alexander has a long expertise in succession planning, family constitution, governance, as well as family office. He supports entrepreneurs on complex topics around the world and is also an author of several books on the mentioned topics. So I'm looking forward for an insightful conversation with Alexander and welcome you here at PwC in Switzerland. Yes, hello, welcome. Thank you for being here. And I would say to directly get into the topic, I would just like to know why everyone is talking about family offices currently. This is like uh, the family office topic is becoming more and more relevant for family uh, businesses, but also for, um, I would say, families um, that want to um, invest their fortune professionally. And I have one example of one family I, I worked with. They have a family business and succession. Everything uh, was perfectly um, done uh, first to the second generation. And the second generation sat down and developed a family constitution. And in this process, um, they discovered that there is more, that there are more assets that their father owns next to the family business. And uh, due to this, they thought, how shall we manage all those different assets uh, in the second in, in our generation? And they decided to to found their own family office to manage those different assets. And I think that's a good way to develop also the the other assets ne next to the uh, to the business. And uh, more and more families um, have this issue that there is that there is real estate, that there is a portfolio of assets, and so on that needs to be professionally managed. And therefore, I think. Um, we will see in the in the next years more and more family offices that will be founded by by owner families. So you just mentioned that most family offices are developed as a result of an existing family business. I understand what a family business is, I suppose, <laughs> but how would you define a family office? A family office is there to manage the different assets a family owns. And uh, you can say it's a self-contained organizational unit uh, belonging to one or more families um, and they really own it. And they manage this large and the family office manages this large complex portfolio with a goal. And this goal is a long term existence of um, the different assets. And what is important, and th that differs a family office to um, any other um, investment vehicles, that it's it, it is free of conflicts of interest. Um, so the family officer is really there to uh, work in the interest of the owners, in the interest of the, the family that is owning the different assets and uh, therefore uh, we need to keep this in mind because um, I think that's the biggest asset a family office has that you don't uh, need to rely on interests and uh, you don't need to rely on other influences. Um, you can do your own and make the best decisions in, 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 in the way the family wants the wealth uh, to be grown. Then from your perspective, what is the biggest differentiator between a family office and a family business? Because in, in both aspects, you have something, either you have a product or you have um, some, some assets. So 
Yeah, and that's the that, that's the the, the difference. Um, you're saying as a family business, you have a product um, or a service you produce. You have something tangible. You have something you can get attached to, emotionally attached to. Also, as an as an owner, it's something different when you go to the supermarket as an owner and see your own products uh, standing there in the shelves than going to your bank. Having a look on your bank account and seeing a large or high number. This is something totally different. So there is like an emotional attachment of an owner um, towards the products, the services. However, the emotional attachment of an owner to um, to different assets, it's totally different. And I think that's the biggest difference between those uh, family businesses and family offices. And when we have a look into history, we can see family businesses that they have been there for a long, long um, time. The oldest family business is still existing, and I have visited um, this, uh, this, this family business some years ago. It's a, a Japanese um, uh, Ryokan, a, a special hotel. It has been there for 1,302 years. In comparison to this, a family office, the oldest family office, um, this is 71 years. So that's like that's a big difference. And why is this the case? One reason could be that, for sure, the family office is not uh, is something new. However, to exist over generations, and that's the biggest goal of a family business, you want to exist over generations. And it's easier to have a business, a product you produce, a service you produce, than having just money that is invested in, in different assets. And, and there is... I would say um, that's the biggest challenge of a family uh, family office to produce this emotional attachment of the owners towards the, the 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 investment towards the money. Well, that's just leading to my next question because I'm a bit curious to hear what is then actually the trigger uh, for a family to decide that they want to found a family office or get closer to to wealth management on a professional professional level there are two um two reasons uh, i i see um, why families decide to found their own family office especially to their own single family office one is a cash event the family has sold their business and now what what shall they do with all this money they need to invest the money and for this they found their own single family office either together as all family members or each family member um, separate their single entity that's one one reason the other reason is that when you have a business and when you have decided to invest next to the business together also as a family, in different assets. Then you want to professionalize this. And that's another reason, founding your own family office, that you want to professionalize the services you get, uh, the advice you get. And that, that are the two reasons why families decide to, to have their own family office. You were already mentioning the word single family office, partly multifamily office and the different options you're actually having. So either you're having the family office within integrated within a business or you just sold your business and you're founding a completely somehow new business. So what are the different types of family offices? There are actually two different types of family offices. One is a single family office. This single family office belongs to one single family. Either it's one person or it's like a small family or it's a large family, but it belongs to one family with um, most of the time one last name. The other part is, uh, or the other um, uh, family office is like a multifamily office. And this multifamily office either belongs to different families having different last names, so coming from different backgrounds, or another type of multifamily office is a commercial family office. And this commercial family office um, can be an independent or dependent multifamily office. And when you have this cash event and decide, okay, we want to invest together as a family, 
then it is necessary to have a certain amount of money to invest together to found your single family office. And if this amount is not, not high enough, then it's better to think about going to a multifamily office. It's like a simple question of make it or buy it. And when you make it, you found your own single family office. And when you buy it, you buy the services um, from, a, from a multifamily a family office. But when you decide to found your own single family office, it's like founding a separate single company. And you can just do it like, okay, um, we do it. It's like really you have to have a business plan. You have to have a strategy. You have to have a right governance. You have to need, you need to have a, um, uh, an interest and you need to have time to really found your own business, your own single family office business. And if you say, mm, I don't want to have the interest, I don't have the time, then uh, possibly you should go to a multifamily office and ask them manage your money. Founding a business necessarily uh, needs some money. So you were already saying, depending on how deep your pockets are, let's call it that way. So how much uh, wealth do you actually need to decide to go for a family office structure in any kind of... I think there is one simple single number and i would say you need to have at least 80 million swiss francs to to invest to um to found your own single very small single of uh, family office structure two three employees uh, managing your your money if your uh, the amount you want to invest is lower then it's uh, possibly better to make them buy decision and be part of a multifamily office. There are great multifamily office on the market that really also act in in the interest of the, the, the families. Um, and if the amount is higher, you can think about building um, a, a larger structure, 12, 15, um, 15 uh, people working there. Each asset um, class has its own expert and managing the different um the, the the money that is invested in those uh, those assets you have someone for controlling you have someone for accounting and so on and um, but this depends really on the size uh, of of your wealth you want to get managed in this uh, this uh, in your family office structure well this already goes into the direction of really how can i actually set up the family office and how to structure it and i think that's a completely new topic we are opening here and in terms of time I, I think we have to close here but I hope that we can discuss uh, the topic of structure and strategy in another podcast but for our listeners uh, what are the three things they have to maybe think about before actually deciding to found a family office I think one important aspect is you have as a family decide, have to decide do we want to invest together or do we want to invest separately? And this is a question the owners after a cash event, uh, especially, they have to decide together. I think that's the most important question. And when you have deci decided, yes, let's stay together, then you need to define a good strategy. You need to be clear what you want to achieve as a family with the wealth and you need to um, to develop a good structure a good governance for this uh, for for your for your family office that everyone knows for what who is responsible and um, I think that these are the three three main parts a family uh, uh, should think about before establishing the family office because if they if they in this process uh, discover that they don't come up let's say five siblings that they don't come up with one solution then they should really go back to question one and ask themselves do we really want to stay together or is it possibly better that each one of us invests the money separately 
I think that was a perfect closing and a nice giveaway for our listeners and audience to think about those three questions. And um, I hope that we can, in the next podcast, um, follow up on those questions and looking forward to the next conversation. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you.